drink like the booze is free today we got john renz and bridget esposito on the show they are from prudential they're joining us as directors of the creative division and today we have chosen some smittix actually via john so john tell us why smittix well i had to go irish um i was in the mood for a red i'm a seasonal drinker right mm, and then yeah, the fall in the fall i like uh beer uh, yeah. I'm, it's like tailgating season, so it's beer. So I was I was craving a Smithix. Yeah. Yep. And then I kind of jumped the gun on you and I said, ooh, a black and tan would be good, which maybe a Smithix isn't perfect for, but <laughs> here we are trying to make some black and tans. I think we did pretty good. I think it's good. Yeah. I, it looks perfect. I'm not sure it comes across <laughs> on camera, but it's Yeah, no, it's, it's good perfect. to go. Um, so we're going to get started today with the first question. So... Bridget, John, I'll let you go yes. first, John. No, ladies first. Bridget, we'll go first. So um, what was your first job and what is your job now? So my very first job was working at Photo Magic on the boardwalk, superimposing people's faces onto other people's bodies. Um, and that was back in like the late 90s, so you can imagine what that looked like. And uh, my current job is Vice President Group Creative Director at Prudential. That's awesome. Yeah. And John, what was your first job? Are we going first, like... Job where I made money or first job in advertising? I mean, that's really your job choice. where you make money. Well, you have some fun. Have some fun. My agree. God, this is horrible and embarrassing. <laughs> um, my first job where I actually made money in a paycheck was I worked in a. <laughs> This is embarrassing. I worked, <laughs> I, I worked in a woman's clothing store. Uh, I was like the cleanup guy. I unpacked boxes and I, I, I threw right, away John. garbage and, and, and all kinds of things. So it was, I was like a guy Friday, I guess. All right. Well, that's not that bad. It's, uh, it's close. Um, <laughs> it would be more luxur It would be more glamorous if I said what, what other jobs were. But what? my current job uh, is I'm the vice president. I'm a vice president and group creative director along with Bridget. Um, at Prudential. So then how do you two split that up? Well, I'm the brains. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> and I'm the beauty. <laughs> I'm the... <laughs> All right, well played, well played. Um, so I oversee design presentations in that space, and John is... And I'm copywriting. Yep. Yep. Copywriting, editing, proofreading. So together we make... Just kidding. Yeah, it's like we're, we're like, one. like one person. Yeah. One. So I feel like, John, you were going to say about what kind of got you into the creative. I'm actually interested <clears throat> in that too. Like how did you get to this... Part of the field the creative field yeah um, i mean yeah because we all have a choice in life and what part of business we play in right and right. we all have to play in some type of business or mm -hmm. you know so um originally i wanted to be a journalist i wanted to be like the next woodward and bernstein so that's what i went to college for journalism mm -hmm. and uh when you start to you know the way journalism is set up is after you do your sort of 100 level courses you get in two three and you're actually working for newspapers and magazines and things and uh, I quickly realized I did not want to be a journalist. But I did like the idea of writing. I like the yeah. idea of, of, uh, of being creative. Um, so I luckily had a mentor at a young age. I have a cousin who's in advertising. And, and, and I was connected with uh, an internship. And I, I did an internship in public relations. And I did an internship in advertising. And I said, hey, this is pretty cool. I could, I could really dig this. And it's been downhill ever since. <laughs> <laughs> it is a long, interesting road, right? To, uh, it, creative. Yeah, it really was. But it was, you know, there, there was always the desire to be creative from a yep. writing perspective. Yep. Uh, it was just a matter of finding where the passion was. Yeah. yeah. And what about you, Bridget? How did you get, I mean, so you obviously were doing Photoshop in the 90s. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if that was with like a Tandy or with like MS-DOS, but it how was, did that go? It was pretty rough. That yeah. was pretty rough. Um, but uh you know, it's very similar to John. So when I went into college, I knew that I was really interested in creativity. I knew that I was good at it, even though I hadn't fostered it as much um, through academics in the younger years. But I totally went towards it. And then when I went to graduate, I had an internship in public relations, an internship in advertising. And I think that's when you figure out which one you want to do. And for me, I figured out that for me to be happy, I need to have a certain percentage of my day being creative, whether yeah. it's brainstorming or making or, or you know, what have you. And that still is me and my life. Like in our roles, we oversee and things like that. But I know that for me to feel fulfilled, a certain percentage of my day needs to be making, brainstorming, creating. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. We I worked think... together eight years. I had no idea you were PR and advertising. <laughs> See the things you learned? Wow. Unbelievable. To yeah. So glad we're having this conversation. <laughs> my, uh, my wife said to me the other day, I go, which toothbrush is mine? I go, the blue one, right? She goes, she goes, blue is mine. I'm like, I'm the boy. She goes, blue's my favorite color. I'm like, that's your favorite color? <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it'd be a very long time. To learn something new every day. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, um, so one of the things that you guys did then, when we're just talking about it, is you went from being the, you know, creative to the leadership role, mm-hmm. the direction role, um, which is, you know, a very challenging, you know, uh, move. What, tell me a little bit about how that differs from production and how like so you were saying that creative is like really important but Mm -hmm. sometimes in leadership you get creative direction but you don't get to do it do you feel a difference in that i definitely feel a difference but i also know how to balance it so again there's projects that we take on our own to still get our hands dirty and i still think there's that inner piece of finding working with someone else to help them come to that creation point and directing them and things like that and i know that throughout my career i've always naturally felt like a leader and that's what we teach our teams all the time as well and there's so many things that we hold a a matter of like keeping each other accountable you're only as good as the person left or right of you you're gonna lift someone up next to you all of those things kind of naturally led helped us roll into those roles easier and so it wasn't that much of a stretch like the leadership part in our areas felt easier even though there's many challenging things but the balance of how much we put our hands into is, is more the difficult thing that we struggle with all the time. But yeah. I feel like we've gotten it there. And there's some days when you're like, man, if I do one more admin task, I'm going to lose my mind, right? <laughs> yeah. And I really, and then there's others when you're fully immersed in a shoot in LA and you feel really good, like, like those, you know, so you've got to take it in waves and yeah. ebbs and waves. Yeah, you have to shift where you find your fulfillment, right? So you, when you go from sort of actually doing all of the work right yeah. to 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 leading the majority of work you know there's an element of sadness that you're not writing all day or designing all yeah. day right um but the plus side is when you are i found when you're really into doing this when you're really into advertising you really want more control right that yeah, that's for sure. right because because they're your concepts they're your designs they're your uh, messaging and you know to, to really be successful in advertising i think you have to champion the work you have to spearhead it right if you're my client i need to have a dialogue i need to champion my work i yep. need to sell my work i need to make my work as good as it can be and that requires leadership even if it's on a personal level right yeah. so when you when you when you start to go from uh, doing the actual work to to leading it and directing the work it's a similar discipline right you still need it to is. have that um that champion mentality and that desire to elevate it's just that now you have to you know inspire yeah. that in others right yeah. and you have you have to start to you know instill those desires and and um and 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 get that out of the team yeah it's a more of a a, just a leadership role of still being creative right and and i think you know what you're saying john is like even if you're the designer you're the lead designer you're getting creative input anyway right so right so it becomes and you like a lot of times it's like well this is partly the client's design this is partly my manager's design or my director's design it always kind of partly become someone else's anyway and right. sometimes you blame on how the design came out on <laughs> <laughs> yeah. whose it actually was right and how good it came yeah, out and, and it's a cycle too right yeah. because it, it's you know, usually you make your way into becoming a creative director or creative leadership because you're good at that because yeah. you're good yeah. at communicating with clients you're good at championing championing your work um so a lot of that is uh, you know trying to empower your team to do that as well i think empowerment's like a really so uh so still getting to be creative director here as well sometimes i disagree with the direction of art direction or even the lead designer and Mm -hmm. and if i truly disagree i always say i have veto power but disagree and like truly disagree i think are very different right there's 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 a big gray area in between and sometimes you gotta like let them have their creative direction, right? That why did, would you why would you have great employees if they didn't have the creative direction? Even if you don't fully agree with it, if it looks good, if you have you know, you have to let people breathe and yeah. have that. Otherwise yeah. all you have is doers. So yeah. absolutely empowerment is a huge part of leadership and it's one of the hardest things I think when you become a leader. It's not micromanaging. And that would be like learning when to let go. Yeah. yeah. And I because empowerment's huge for us and I know 
for me, it's one of those things where I can't do everything. He right. can't do everything. Right. We need to make sure as we're taking on 8,000 projects a year that our team is empowered to go ahead and make those decisions. And sometimes they're nervous about it. But we've worked so hard to get seats at the table right. inside Prudential. And it's not just our seats. It's our team seats as well, right? So I know that if there's a larger project going on and I'm not in the room and John's not in the room, one of our team members who might be an art director, might even be a junior director, might be a creative director, mm -hmm. they will say what's right. They're going to ask the right questions. They're going to push for what they think and they believe in. And they're going to run that right. really smoothly. And if they need us, they will come get us. Yeah. But there is that safety of knowing they can handle that and then getting to that point where they feel confident enough to... And then understanding and teaching them when to let go and when to hold on. Like, what is it worth Good fighting point. for? And, you know, and we attach that back to the brief, right? And, like, really using that as, as the driving point back if they're really fighting for something. But it's a lot of lessons, and um, but it's all for the better. I feel like our team, like, I'm really proud of our team and our culture that we've built there. It's amazing. And, you know, yeah. it's a lot about empowerment. If you have too much uh, management or micromanagement of it, then... They have none of that confidence Correct. when you're not in the room mm -hmm. to do it, right? So, like, if they never made a decision or they haven't made a bunch of really great decisions, yeah. then then they have uh, lack of confidence to do it when you're not in the room. Yeah. And then that's crazy because how do you travel? How do you, you know, do what you have to do as a leader? How do you go on PTO? How do you go take PTO? Yeah, <laughs> I exactly. hope you do take yeah, good PTO. I do. I do. Good. Of course, yeah. Awesome. See, yeah. I knew I liked it. Yeah. Give me a high five. Say, yeah. good. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I love other to. leaders that yeah. appreciate PTO. No, That's so important. Yeah, you have to important. take it. Yeah. We yeah. Were, I was just talking with uh, one of uh, our managing, uh, marketing directors. She she is getting married. And mm -hmm. and I sat with down with her today. Well, she has the next two weeks, you know, planned out. And, you know, she's getting married. So yeah. she's like, That's I told the team to pretend like I'm dead. <laughs> don't contact me. I love that. I love <laughs> and I'm like, that's yeah. awesome. I was like, and of course, you know, I was like, can you take me through the successions of this, this, and this? And of course, it's, you know, if right. you've got good people, it's all mapped out. It's all good to go anyway. Yeah. And I'm like, good, then go. You know, yes, PTO is, we all need it. Especially, yep. we kind of got this mix of now work from home. <laughs> and now PTO almost yep. isn't a thing because it's like, well, now you're accessible anywhere. Right. right. So got to turn it off. You know, it, you do. And if you don't, then especially as creatives, I find that you could you could burn out very easily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we hold each other accountable. I'm on him all the time. I'm like, are you taking PTO? Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. Going with your wife? You better have a good time and not answer the phone. Right. And I don't. <laughs> and, I, and I don't. I He's getting better at it. I'm trying. I'm, yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. But yeah, but it's also about too. It's 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 not just sort of the 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 vibe in the team, right? Where they feel empowered and they're they're emboldened to kind of make decisions. Um, but it, it it's it's also about helping everybody raise up, right? Yeah. So because you know. Agreed. You know, when you're when you're in creative, you want to kind of do different things. You want to look yeah. like what's next, what's next, what's next. And unless you've got a strong team underneath you that you know it, it can make their own decisions, and you know, you can't you can't yeah. look to what's next, right? Because you'll be forever micromanaging. You know, if I if I wanted to re-edit every piece of copy that came across our desk, I mean, we did. Of course, you can. I mean, we did. 15, 20,000 pieces of content this year alone so right. far. And you, you can't do that. Number, yeah. you, you just can't, right? And, <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and you, have yeah. to, you have to do the step back where you go, okay, is it how I would have written it? No. Is it on brief? Yes. yes. Good. Good. Go. Yep. And I may make a suggestion. I actually just had a conversation yesterday where I reviewed a storyboard and I, there were two sentences and I said, are we sure we want to say it like this? Are we sure? And they said, uh, yeah, this is why we made the decision. Uh, are you okay? Or should we change it to the way you want it? And I said, your call. Like right. I make suggestions. Right. You guys make decisions. Right. Like if you guys are comfortable with your decision, go, Yeah. go. And circling back to the leadership question you had in the beginning about how to make that jump from yeah like, that's part of it right is seeing things more globally and less micromanaging and yeah. and, and i think that we find or a singular level right and yeah. i i find fulfillment now i find it within finding that global connection like making sure that it's all following in the brand and then connecting over here and over here like that's become a fulfillment for me that i didn't realize i would enjoy so much and that would push me and fill up kind of the creative need at times too and yeah. letting go of that, that micromanaging and yeah. letting the team do their thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it, and, and I agree with that. And, uh, I think the, when sometimes we're, you're in the role, you don't realize how much is going on. Right. <laughs> so when you say, yeah. John, like, you're like, okay, well I got to let you make a decision. And is it on brand? Did it, 
uh, did it accomplish the goals of the creative brief? So it's on brand sure. and it accomplished the goals. Would it, is it exactly the way I would have done it? No, but is it on brand and accomplish the goals? It's like, let's go, baby. Yeah, yeah, let's I go. got another 12,000 to go. Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> you I, know? I, I, have, I have a motto I've been saying since my, my, one of my first mentor in the business, my, my cousin taught me, he said, you know, you never run out of ways to make things better. You just run out of time. Right. right. So oh, 100%. Like, how yeah. are like how so true. long are we going to beat this thing up yeah. before, you know, because after all, oh, yeah. it's a creative business we're in. But we're in a business, yeah. you yeah. know, and, and yes. you know, that that's that's at the end of the day where we need and to And deciding be. which project you spend the extra time on because you know versus others. Yeah, and sure. that's a more mature yeah. space. It's hard, though, too, because some things you want to grasp onto. Oh, and Because they're more fun <laughs> yeah, and exciting. Yeah, yes. Exactly. You know, but like, you might gotta, not yeah. drive the business outcome, right? So. Yeah. But uh, other, you have to let other people have fun, too. Yes. You have yeah. to let other people right. have fun. Well, actually, which talks about to retention. So everything you're saying about leadership talks about retention. So tell me about why you think employees stick around and or what your philosophy is about retaining good talent. Uh, how, how does you guys have a philosophy around that? So there's a, quite a few things around that, for sure. And I just had this conversation with someone else um, because they were like, wow, you know, your employees have all been together for the past eight years. Like, wow, that's what, great. Yeah. yeah. And, Especially uh, in this field. Yeah. It's, yeah mm -hmm. And um, they're like, what are you doing? What are you putting in their drink? I'm like, nothing's right. going in their drink. <laughs> but I think a lot of it is the culture, right? It's, yeah. it's around everything we just talked about. How are you empowering them? to take on these projects and lead in their own way, giving them space to maybe fail but learn yeah. and giving them the space to grow. Also asking them and saying, what do you really wanna do? You're doing, here's your objectives here. And then raising the bar for them every year. I mean, yeah. that's, I know that sounds like a little back because when you raise the bar for people, they step up right. and the right people kind of gravitate each other. And we have this appreciation of diversity of thought, right? We all come from different backgrounds and different spaces. I mean, we were talking about how I've come from a family of farmers, right? right. Um, and so I think the team feels whole that way because we're constantly pushing on each other. And we have the culture that if, you, you know, you're going to hold people accountable, you're only as good as the person left or right of you. Right. What are you doing in that space to lift them up? Yep. And then the other thing, which takes a little time for some people to get used to, is constantly sharing. Sharing, no matter where you are in the process. Because yeah. I know people get crazy, like, oh, gosh, I just started this. I don't want to show it to anybody. But you need to get more comfortable with, like, sharing yeah. that out. And I think it helps people learn along the way. And so we have a really good culture in that space. We meet once a week. We talk about our top three projects. We showcase projects. And then we make sure that their learning and development is, is where they want to be, too. Yeah. Yep. And part, of, conferences and part and of it is fighting for more and more and better work, yeah. right? So we the run at the table, yeah. right? So we run an in-house team, yeah. right? And and Prudential is a, a blended model. We have external agencies yeah. and we have an internal, uh, and we have an internal uh, full service agency. Yeah. So it's fighting for all of the work, right? Um, and our teams handle a myriad work. I mean, everything from the down and dirty sales <laughs> yeah. decks and, and, and sales flyers to, you know, sales alert emails to paid advertising yep. and social media and, and, and branded content. So it really runs the gamut. So a lot of it too is fighting for the bigger work, yeah. right? Making sure right. that you're, you're not sort of relegated to the in-house agency, yeah. right? And, yeah. and, and becoming, you know, like an afterthought. Yeah. You have yeah. to keep fighting and demonstrating for better work and that energizes the team too. Yeah. It's like, you know, we, you know we, we had one team, you know, prior to last year, really didn't do a whole lot of paid advertising work. They're doing all of it now because we got a taste of it. They got a, they got a chance at it, mm -hmm. and they knocked it out of the park. Yep. So now that, 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 that's a stream of work that no longer goes to an outside agency. It, comes, it yeah. stays with us, and that energizes the team yeah. because they, they have the opportunity. They're seizing it, and they're going to get more. Yeah, I think so. I love what both of you said. So and I'll start back with you, John, is the creative, like, right? So we're, we are creatives, right? So we could just do all in-house work. And we have big clients yeah. that we could just have people be production and be basically an agency employee, right. but almost in-house, right? Just by doing the same brand every day in and out. Mm -hmm. But that's not why they jumped into the creative field. Right. They wanted to be creative. If they wanted to put the logo in the same exact spot every single day, then you know that's really very production oriented, right? right. So you got to let them be creative. And then going back to empowering, and then we didn't touch on this. But it, letting people make them their own mis like make Absolutely. a mistake, and then how you handle an employee 
and a mistake or a poor direction or whatever you want to call it um, is so important to retention, right? Because <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. back in the day, like, I just remember like, so when I actually, I, I'm a bachelor of fine arts. So my, it was, and it was the early 2000s. So 2000, 2004 is when I went to school. And that back then was still like, if you're, you not cry. crying, if you're yes. not crying, if you're <laughs> yes. not crying during a critique, then they're not critiquing hard enough. I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> so like, so like Same I, every, every critique was like, like She's not people crying. crying. Yeah. People <laughs> crying. And I'm like, holy cow. And by the way, I, I'd work on my stuff nonstop till perfection. Yeah. Like, and then I wake up at like four in the morning and then I'd be like, I'm redoing the whole presentation, you know, like I have a paper with the, the wax paper. Yes, and yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Like, yeah. I'm like, um, but the critique back then was, and back then, oh, Jesus, yeah. um, but I know, we're old, just, just, yeah, saying. I know, yeah, whatever. So a couple, couple decades ago in the early 2000s and then whatever. Yeah. So like was much different mm -hmm. than it is now. So, and, but, uh, with that being said, if you weren't a badass, right then you couldn't handle that and that yeah. wasn't going to help you grow right so Which, there's, a, there's a different way to handle and and to critique and to allow people to make mistakes and then to tell them you know okay like besides critiquing but like also like okay this this was uh this wasn't you know something that happened and now how are we going to handle it going forward mm -hmm. that was always like a big thing i worked for a dutch company coming out of college and like their the big thing was going forward <laughs> it was like, okay, this happened, and let's yeah. see what's going to happen going forward. Right. Being from Jersey was like, this happened, and let me make you feel bad about it <laughs> for the next six months, one year, and I'll sure. remember, mind you, in five years when we're in another argument. You know, yeah, like, you know, basically. But, yeah, but like working for a European company, Northern European specifically, they were very like, okay, this happened, now what do we do going forward? And, right. And I think that if you can embody that, then people of all sorts of personalities could really, you know, survive and really you know uh progress you know and i had a similar upbringing as yeah. you with the you know fine arts they're like if you you know if you're not crying yeah. it's not you know this has been a terrible critique yeah, exactly. and i think between we're that not being we're not being honest right. with you between that and then also um college softball was the same way i had a, I had a coach that was like i'm gonna make them cry right and i walked out of that both of those experiences going there's got to be a better way to do this there's a better way to motivate people <laughs> yeah and i think you know and then in advertising, you felt that for a while. And I knew that I, as a person who is, when you get the opportunity to lead, I would not do that. I think you learn a lot about leadership and what you don't want to do from bad leaders just as yeah. much as good leaders. Mm -hmm. And I knew that that was definitely not going to be the way that I was going to manage. But you're right. It's all how you react next. And being able to get them to talk through, like, this is how I failed. It's like, it's okay, but what's next? Right. What do you? How did you control that? What was your reaction to that? And then also as leaders sharing the stories of when you totally mess up, right? Yeah. Because it's authentic to them and they're like, oh, I think you, we share so many stories, right? Because, I mean, listen, some people are like, wow, you really have your life together. And I'm like, I really don't. <laughs> it just looks like it sometimes. Yeah. And then I will like tell stories. It's all and it's, advertising. It's yeah. all, it's all right. advertising. It's right. all sort of, but um, it, it's great because then you tell those stories and they're like, my God. Feel better. Right. I feel better because right. I know that you also trip up or make mistakes or right. do things that are ridiculous, um, and that's just part of life. And I think as a leader, when you can like share that with your team and they see that, yep. but then you see they see how you reacted. I think yeah. it's really powerful. Yeah, you know, part of it is prov providing what we like to say air cover, right? Like, so our, our, our we're going to support you. We're going to support your decisions. Yep. We're going to provide air cover if yep. if, if if need be. Uh, but the other thing too is, and, and I think I said said it earlier. Part of it is, you know, pushing on the team to make sure they're thinking things through, right? And, and are you able to defend your creative decisions? Right. I yeah. may not agree with it, Agreed. right? Yeah, it's but just it's huge. on. It's on straight. You're not. It's not going against the brief, right? You're not breaking the yeah. strategy. It's not how I would handle it. But okay, just be ready to defend yeah, it. Wanted, and yeah. and part of that is also sort of coaching. You know, if if they're going to you know present to client A or client B, yep. internal you know, we, or external, internal, and and yep. we will know. We'll say, okay, well, when you present to X, yep. she's gonna say right. Y and Y and Y. Or right. when you present to Y, yep. he's gonna say he's gonna come at it from this way yep. and be prepared to defend your decisions. Yeah. And yeah. if they can do that, then then that's great. Yeah. No, for sure. And I think uh, I think that's one of the weakest parts of presentation sometimes are, 
hey, this is what we did, you know, <laughs> yeah. but it's like, it's just a, this is what we did instead of here's what I heard. Yeah. Right. Cause you got to empower the client and, and I, I say again, internal or external, they're still a client, got to empower them. Yeah. This was what I heard you said were your goals, what we were trying to achieve or attempted right. to achieve and uh, what went wrong, what, you know, what were the you know best outcomes and for that reason, X, Y, and Z. And, you know, I, you know, when we discussed it, here's a couple other things, you know, I think that uh, the proper presentation yeah. allows the viewing party, party yeah. and the approval party right. to feel part of the process. Because what a lot of creatives don't understand is that they are, they're part of a team, they sure. get back to that production person, they're, right. they're part, this isn't just about you and creatives. Right we're all so important, right? Because like we're so special because we're yeah. creative, right? Yeah. So and oh, yeah. we don't we don't realize, yeah, like look at me, look at me, yeah. look what I control, look what I can put together, look what I can do, you know? But, but it's we about, don't realize it's not about you, it's about what right. you're doing for us. For as them, good. for them, them, right? Yes. We, we've had, you know, um, over the past few years, uh, our responsibility has grown and, and taken on different areas of businesses. And they all had different ways of, of presenting and, and, and doing the yeah. work. And w what's interesting, is, it, it's no surprise, right? But that the, the teams that do the work, present the work, share the work, talk about their opinions, um, usually are more successful than the ones that don't. You know, like yeah. most, we have a we have a traffic mat. We have a, a system, right? We have a, yeah. a, a that, yeah. that we upload work and, and yep. things like this, and you know it's it, it's great for making sure projects get from point A to point B. It's really bad if you don't have that if it, it takes the place of the discussion, right? So I like to call it a cold handoff, yep. right? So it's like okay, I did the work. I'm just going to upload it into the system, yes. right? And then they read it and they read it cold, right? And it's like, well, that's not so the funny. good way to do it, right? Because it's if, so if in the brief they said, we need you to do A, B, C, and D, okay, great. Well, as we know as creatives, you start doing it and you're like, that doesn't flow at all. Right. So you're going to go A, B, C, F, G, right? And you may look back and go, that's way better. Now, if you just upload that and you don't defend that decision and say, hey, I know what you asked for, yeah. right. but as I was working on it, they're left to assume, well, they didn't even listen to me. Yeah. They didn't even listen to me. Right. And that's a very different discussion. And it's a different feeling as a person that uh, assigned the project or, or commissioned the project, right? Yes. So then how do you, so we've dealt with the same things internally. I've heard it from other, you know, uh, internal creatives as well, um, is uh, the communication, right? So now that mm -hmm. we have some remote, some not remote, partially remote, whatever it may be, or just the fact that they're literally sitting next to each other. And they just not communicating well. So, and whatever project management software you use, you put the creative brief up, it says mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z, this, says that, and the other thing. And it can be interpreted all different ways, mm -hmm. um, especially if there's not good training with the creative brief. Is there a way that you, so I know you have a kind of a matrix system of, of putting your teams together, but how do you make sure that your team's communicating in a, in a way that is good for collaboration and for the best, you know, creative? So I'm going to say something that is not popular opinion, but using technology, COVID, remote, or otherwise as an excuse is like BS, Agreed, right? Yeah. Because it is never, someone's like, but we're, it's, we're remote and they're not. I'm like, that doesn't matter. Like nobody. Just click the button. Just yeah. click, right there. Right. It, yeah. You pick up the phone and you call <laughs> like, the Hi. person. Yeah. You're like, hey. Yeah. And so for us, it's, it's helping people understand that you need to have the conversation and you need to communicate and you need to network no matter where you are or where you're sitting. It doesn't matter. There's no excuse for it, for you not to hit someone up on a messenger or call them and just, you know, so, hey, working on this project's going really well. Right. Here's where I am. What do you think of this? And I think sometimes people get into that locked workflow and they're stuck on it. And everyone's like, well, yes. that's the process. But it's not. It's there to help. It's there to help rounds of revisions. It's there to track things. Right. But it's not there to help you communicate. Yeah. So that is something that needs to happen. And I think, you know, it's great to keep notes within those systems, yeah. but the communication has to happen. And that's why I think when you were bringing up the iterative process, right? It's like, so you're, so to me, it's like, what did you mean by this? First of all, mm -hmm. when you get the round of revisions or you get the creative brief, what right. did you mean by this? It's not like something that gets pinged over. Right. right. You know, right. it's like, right. hey, you know, I'm just looking at this real quick. You got five minutes to talk about it. Mm -hmm. What did you mean by this? And when you say this, what did you mean by that? Or, right? yeah. or it's a revision. It's like, hey, would rather this be a call out? Was that call out like, uh, is that call out just like something in quotes? Is that something like blocked off with contrast? Is this an infographic? Like, is this call out like how powerful do we want it? Right. right? Like, is this, and so that iterative process is really important. And For I do sure. see the same thing where it becomes a, 
this is what I got, and then I do it, and then I send it back, and I'm like, oh, that, well, how did you, how did I know that you didn't mean that? <clears throat> that's yeah, when so it really that, goes off the rails, yeah. and that's, you know, so it's funny, you know, the workflow system is set up like a factory, like a yeah. waterfall. waterfall, like, yeah. a, like waterfall. a true waterfall, right? Yeah. And I can't tell you how many times the, the, the team at this point sort of like, so they, the project starts, and it's like, intake, kickoff, copy due on Monday, design due on Friday. But it's like, no, 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 no. You'll get copy and design together. We'll right. present the concept. Well, we're not going to see copy for it? No, no, that's not how it works, yeah. right? It's, it's, it's You're not going to, you're not going to, approve copy over here right you know go through six rounds right. and now you got to shoehorn it into yeah, a design you're definitely not going to see a design without copy in it or right. lorem ipsum yeah it's yeah. it's yeah. just it's just not a great way to do yeah. things but you know it, it a lot of that is just dialogue with with Absolutely. requesters right they have to well i want to see something i want to see something you will right. and it's going to be great but it's going to be more well thought out yeah. yeah i think when you think about the future of what creatives are right because our our role is constantly changing what I did in my role 20 years ago is not the same as what I do now or that my younger creatives do. The future of a creative team, the person needs to be a really strong communicator, needs to be a really great interviewer because you need to pull out all the information. Mm -hmm. They've got to adjust to the, the remote and the hybrid and everything else. Yes. And they've got to be able to do more, almost with less time and less stuff, right? Yeah. So understanding their software and things like that, it's like so imperative to what the future creative is because the future creative is much different than that creative was even you know 10 years ago yeah and then if you're in a space already like even that evolution you can't be the same person you can't be the same creative and you've got to up your skills and especially in the communication space yeah. and especially in the in-house yeah. area right because we don't have even though we're we're an in-house group we don't have a, a lot of the functionalities that some agencies do, right? And a lot of those barriers are gone. So, for example, we don't have a, we don't have a, an, a, a, an ex account executive, right? right? We don't necessarily. That no. Well, that's <laughs> right, what exactly. that's that's what she's right. We, the, like the creatives really play really a blended role, right? We don't have account executives. We don't necessarily have strategists in the way an agency would look at yeah. strategy. We do, but not. Oh, way, yeah, right, yeah. it's not a not a one for one comparison. So um, the onus is really on the creatives to kind of pull the work out, defend the work, yeah. reach out, do that championing, yeah. right? Which is extra stress, right? It's sometimes but it's, so exciting, it's a, but it's cool, right? Yeah. It really gives a creative power over their work, yeah. right? If you think about it, it's not Agreed. like okay, I did the work, I handed it off to the account team, they're off someplace I, presenting I like it. Now I have so to in yeah. college, and even if you're not don't have a good mentor which is what we teach here though is it's like so as a designer so i'll mm -hmm. start on the design side mm -hmm. as a designer it's like if you're not reading the copy which That's right. and, and and i think a lot of designers are like okay here's the headline Boop. i'll make the headline look like this here's the <laughs> yes. here's the body copy here's the subheading and like yeah. here's the call out and they're putting it in and i'm like well what's this uh, landing page about yeah. Right. Every, you know, right. I would never call them out like yeah. that, but I it's could true. tell. You yeah. could tell when someone didn't read the content. Yeah. They just laid it out based on right. what they had, and they had. So you're creating visual hierarchy based on content mm -hmm. that you never read, right? But no, Listen, a lot of people talk every about good and then, and then every good art director yeah. should know, understand, and have an opinion on copy, right. and vice versa, and vice versa. Otherwise, right. yeah. yeah. And as far as copy goes, it's like when they were writing copy, it's like, okay, where do I want this to be weighted in the in the composition? Yeah, right. and, and, and then when the I designer pushes back, I've yeah. got a different idea. Suppose, what are right. you trying to, right? It, that, it's that Collab push and pull yeah. collaboration right. that really. And both should be thinking about both. And what I do find when you when you get something that's good but not great, it's they're not thinking about. They're yeah. not doing that, it together. Yeah, they're not doing it together. They're yeah. not thinking about the full and the final value. Well, I actually wanted to touch on, so we got to talk a lot about our teams. I wanted to touch on a little bit of the cool stuff that you guys are doing. So um, working for a big company, uh, I know that, uh, and a company that's been around for what over a century? It'll be 150 years in 2025. So, 150 Three years, years away. You know, no yeah, big deal. No big deal. How do you find? How, how do you you know keep breathing life into a brand that has been you know around so long? I love that question. You want to go first? <clears throat> um, Ladies. Sure. Well, <laughs> <laughs> love you. Go. So it, it, it's funny. You, you first of all, you have to. Uh, I'll speak for the company first, and then you can talk brand. Okay. How's that? Okay. Good. So from a company standpoint, 
right? Is it, is it an insurance company? Well, we used to be, right? It's a financial services company. Right. And it's really easy to go, eh, it's not that sexy. It's, it's an insurance company, right? But at the end of the day, the products and services that we make are critical, right? They, are, they provide for families. They provide life continuity. They provide, we insure people's pensions, mm -hmm. right? Like we, we do things like that. Like we, we, have a, we have a service where we will go in and, and, and we will take a pension like we just did with IBM. We just took over IBM's pension and we are going to fulfill on that promise forever. So you have yeah. 100,000 retired IBM employees yep. are guaranteed their pension yep. because of Prudential. Yep. That's pretty cool. Right, that's pretty cool, Definitely, right? Yeah. It may not be an iPhone, right? It may, right but that's pretty cool, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Like when, when when you do that. So from from a company standpoint, it's sort of continuing to look at your company and look at all of the magnificent things that we have done. Prudential was started, Prudential was the first company to make life insurance available to the quote unquote working man. Hmm. So before that, there was no, it was called burial insurance really at that point. Wow. So before then, if you didn't have a way, if your family didn't have means to bury you, you were basically thrown into a pauper's grave. So Prudential right, was right? founded yeah. on creating affordable life insurance so people could have dignity at that final stage of their life for yeah. them, for their families, right? There's a real nobility in that. And, and a lot of the decisions that we have made throughout history were very, very innovative in that aspect. Right, we we've transformed pension programs. We've uh, we we were on the forefront of, of how we're handling the annuity markets and how we're handling retirement income going forward because pensions are kind of a thing of the yeah. past. So we continue to innovate on things uh, from a financial services standpoint, and that's pretty cool, right? Yeah. So you start there and you go, we work for a pretty cool place. It's just that you you get sort of lulled into the fact that it's insurance, it's boring. Not, not really. It's when not. you like, yeah. you are yeah. at, at, you are helping people when they are at their most vulnerable, right? right? And that's that's a noble calling, yeah. right? And I think, and I like that word, and uh, and I understand the use of the word cool, but I like that word almost better for your company, which is like noble or like transformational, or you yeah. know, yeah. like I mean, uh, innovative or even like you know, uh, front running. I mean, that's and and long standing, right? Yeah. I mean, and. And I think if you can't find inspiration as a creative, then you're really missing out. So then as a yeah. brand standpoint, how does how does uh, how so, does that work out with transforming and how that all works? Yeah, so we're re-energizing the brand and we're going through that process now, um, which we are doing all those things that you just mentioned. We're mm. looking at how we can redefine ourselves yeah. um, for the younger markets and for other markets because we really want to democratize yeah. financial security. Right, because financial security is sexy. I don't care what anybody says, um, but uh, at the end of the day, what we do is we literally every day are trying to lift the bar, yeah. so that one, we're creating really easy to understand materials that are also engaging and exciting, yeah. so that people are more motivated to go take the action to secure their lives and take care of their loved ones and protect, you know, their income and things of that nature. Like that's really important. And I know, as someone who never thought she'd work in the financial sector, like ever, ever, ever. Ever, ever, ever. Um, <laughs> here I am, and I actually been, you know, eight years now, and I love doing this. Yeah. I get excited about really helping people understand really complex things. And what exactly? So right. So how great of a challenge, right? Because we all have challenges. This is this sure. is what we're yeah. we are made to do is come up with great creative about you know, and that is the challenge about um, things that maybe someone that doesn't even know they need it or uh, could use it. Right. Um, would be important to them. So that's yeah. That's like the challenge that I think a lot of creators forget that is why we entered the fields. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Let me ask this and kind of short KPIs. I just and I really think that's interesting, right? So yeah. As a agency on a smaller level than the thousands of employees agency, KPIs I mean we are literally we're put on the chopping block based on KPIs. Correct. Sure. When you get to be a bigger agency and you get paid a lot more money, in fact, well, and I could be wrong, but the KPIs become a little bit looser and it's more about like great creative. But KPIs are always, always very important mm -hmm. and you have to prove the worth. So what, yes. what KPIs are you guys used to, um, to you know, looking at? And the KPIs, I mean, we, we actually stress it in our creative brief that we need to have those. And if they're not on there, then we need to get them set. Yep. And we understand when they are. Um, because we have so many things, 
we need to know what's working, what's not working, right? Because it's return on investment. Like, yeah. what are we working on that's bringing back the, yeah. the, the and, and we get hit with that as well, right? I know we work yeah. in a large company, but every day they want to know, I'm giving yeah. you guys this much money. Like, what's my return on investment? So those KPIs become imperative. Sometimes they're super clear. Yeah. Sometimes we know when we sell this business, it's going to be right. 16 point billion dollars worth of right. stuff. Other times it's not as clear and you have to really work. Yeah. with people to figure out what those are whether it's it's lead gen or it's you know how many opens are happening or but the long kind of longer relationships of people mm -hmm. and customer journeys and things of that nature yeah sometimes it is a little squishy yeah and uh we just have to keep pushing to make it not squishy because at the end of the day we're held accountable for that yeah and at the end of the year they're like what'd budgets, you do, what'd you do? budgets yeah. yeah budget just you know because yep. listen i mean yep. it's unfortunate i think it's the, the world is shifting where people understand the value of creativity and design and what it can do for your for your company, but there's still the question of you know, but what's my return on investment? Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to. Sometimes it's subjective, right? So you know the the, the products and services that that we deal with are complicated, yeah. right? Uh, most of our products are intermediated, mm -hmm. right? So you can't walk into Prudential's office in in Newark and buy a policy. Right. You've got to call a financial advisor, right. you got it right? So, and then our institutional products is the same thing, right? So sometimes, you know, uh, if you're doing a big deal, so let's say you're selling a group life insurance policy to a large company, um, it's not just the presentation, it's not just the material, it's not, it's pricing, it's alignment, it's yep. service, like a lot of stars and moons have to align for some of these sales to take place. So some of the times uh, the, the KPIs that we, we, uh, we take are feedback. Right. right. Sometimes it's, you know, uh, 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 Bridget led a transformation when COVID hit, transformed how our sales teams present, right? Went from, from old fashioned PowerPoints to very highly interactive and engaged digital experiences. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> now, a lot of the ways that we judged those was, you know, verbatims from, you know, some, some okay. from of our intermediaries going, we've never seen anything like that. Yeah. We've that that's unbelievable. We've sat through four presentations. I never saw anything like that. That's a KPI for us. Right. And then, you, and then yeah. you can see how that. it moves into, you know, again, it plays a role in the sale. Yeah. It's not, you know, listen, if our pricing's out of whack and our service isn't, isn't as good as the next provider, the best presentation isn't going to do it. But that's a strong KPI. Yeah. The fact that, that, that what we've done has helped us stand out in a finalist presentation across four or five providers, that's a measurable yeah. KPI. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think we get shoehorned into uh, revenue. Right. And, right. and and also it's ROI, right? Also like return on investment too. But revenue is one of the big the top line of the ROI. Um, but besides the revenue and the actual generation of sales, like um, increasing brand value, increasing mm -hmm. brand awareness, sure. shortening sales cycles, right? right? Yeah. All these things that marketing actually does are, are KPIs that are hard to measure um, or are failed to be measured by a CFO. Yeah, you know, so it's right. it's definitely a very challenging business when you're talking about tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions and millions of dollars being thrown behind creative. Mm -hmm. sure. And at the end of the day, you're you're trying to say, well, this is why the budget's worth it, right? Um, but yeah, some of it is, and it's the difference between yeah. well, is creative an expense or is creative an investment, right? Right, and that's one of our jobs is we we have to make sure that our team is consistently demonstrating the value so yeah. that they understand. We're an investment. We're yeah. not an expense. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and uh, to make it like a complete contrast, imagine Prudential being done in Comic Sans with a rainbow, <laughs> no, you, you know, know, colors <laughs> and like, you know, and then like yeah. everything done with um, like in Word docs yeah. and think of how the company would go and <laughs> and if, if you would ever get a sale. Right. So and now we're talking like black yeah. and white. And then we have a gray area of how much budget is given. Sure. But if for anyone that is like, well, marketing doesn't work or design isn't important, or copywriting and the words you choose aren't important, yeah. then you know, they're, they're just and in a different field and a the lack argument, of understanding. The argument usually isn't like, is it important? It's but how much how do I How important give? is it? Like yeah. how much yes. should I be investing in yeah. there? And I mean, I, for, it's like more, right? But I understand that <laughs> right. it's like, well, <laughs> course, give me more. everything. Yeah, exactly. um, but the balance is, is tough. And I think yeah. what we encourage a lot of our people and our team to do, and we, that we've done, is take a lot of business courses as well, yeah. so that we can understand how our How clients it plays think out, yeah. because there is you know there I took this amazing course that really balanced out 
made me kind of run a company for two years in two days. And I was like, wow, I never looked at it from a different angle, but it helps tremendously understand why these conversations, you take those conversations way less personal yeah. after you understand the global scale of why they're doing it. But yes. yeah, so the conversation is always like, but how much do we give you? Right. right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And it's similar to from a demonstration of value. If you're running an agency, it's the same kind of thing, right? You're, you're, you're pitching new clients and you're going after based on the strength of your work for other clients. Yep. And we have the same thing, even though we are one company, we are made up of many different businesses, yep. right? So, and, and we've had this, right? We, we've had, as I said, you know, uh, uh, Bridget led a transformation of our, of our presentations and that was with one specific business unit, right? The feedback was so overwhelmingly positive, like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. It became, it spread like wildfire. So then the CMOs from some of the other businesses were like, Can, inviting Bridget to the table, we need you to show us what you did yeah. in the group insurance space. Show us what you, yeah. all we hear about is this and this and this. Come show us and how does it apply to our business right. and how can we, you yeah. know, long story short, we do it for all the businesses yeah. now, right? <laughs> so, right. you know. Which is a KPI in itself. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I'm sure we could uh, drink a 12 pack talking about this. <laughs> Seriously, but... <laughs> I think you know This has been great. That's great. All right. So, um, work hours. Jeez. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> flexible. Work hours. Uh, I'm an early bird. I usually start around seven uh, and I'm out of gas by like six. He's lying. He's up at three in the morning. Well, yeah, but uh, he's up at three start. for we're, moments. We're, yeah. Favorite marketing medium? Favorite marketing medium? I'd say show, social media. Yeah, I was to say social. Uh, TikTok specifically. Just oh, saying. wow. I know. Okay, we've been doing some TikTok here. It's actually really fun. Um, uh, favorite, favorite advertisement that's not yours? Oh, go ahead. Ooh, she she yeah. has one, so yeah. go. Uh, when I was coming out of college, it was the Nike ad for women based on athletic women and their body builds. So it was like, I made these shoulders. These shoulders work hard. Yeah, they could that. yeah kick your ass, but this is what they and then it was like yeah I have thunder thighs. So one day I'm gonna I worked hard for these and one day I'm gonna bounce my grandkids on these things and right. that was like very imperative who I was. There was one similar to that. My wife tells me she's like she's like don't say because my daughter was hit me. I was like you punch like a girl. She's like don't say that. And I always think about the advertisement. Like of, a girl. I, I was, throw like a girl. I, and it's was like, that yeah, I think it was you know, Dove right? Yeah, Dove yeah. yeah it's, that's a pretty cool one. Yeah. What do you got, John? So I'm old school. So I will. I'll give you my favorite one off, and then my favorite campaign, and they're both in similar kind of favorite. Favorite one off is the Coca Cola. I'd like to teach the world to sing. Uh, old school. It, 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 very old school. Yeah. And then uh, campaign. Light Beer for Miller, the original Light Beer for Miller campaign, wow. which introduced the category. Yep. One of the first things to bring in sports into the medium and approach it from a comedic angle. I thought we it was brilliant. We weren't born yet. Yeah. I'm gonna I was never born yet. I'm going to Google it later. Or, uh, I'll look, open my we encyclopedia. Were, we were very young Britannica. then. <laughs> I'm the same age as you guys, 29. <laughs> exactly right. Exactly. I like that job. Um, so, uh, Bridget, Serif or uh, Sans Serif? Ooh, Sans Serif. And John, uh, favorite type of book? Oh, God. Uh, everything. I read everything. Um, this is rapid fire, by the way. Self-help. Okay. Because I, I, I need it. Because, I, God, I need it. I love that category. I'm like, God, I just I need look it. for motivation. I'm yeah. not looking really for self-help. I'm like, Barnes & Noble yeah. is like the big size of self-help. I'm like, I'm just looking for like something that's great. I'm in here. advertising. <laughs> I'm broken. I'm in I'm advertising. I'm broken. I need help. Meeting versus email? Oh, Depends on the topic. Geez, meeting. Meeting versus email? Uh, email. Uh, on a, oh, this is loaded. On a scale of 1 to 10, how great is your team, John? On a scale of 1 to 10? Yeah. 10 being great? Yeah. I get us an 11. There we go. That a boy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Um, I'll end it with this one. Bridget, describe John in two words. A lot. Oh, <laughs> perfect. And Jack? My hero. Oh, oh come on. Guys, look at us. <laughs> Dad. Play the same line. Yeah, Love you play it. the game so well. <laughs> you guys are great. That was really fun. I appreciate yeah. it. Awesome. No. Thank you. Hi, right, bye. We did it. This was Thanks. fun. This was fun. Yeah, I Cheers appreciate again. it. Cheers. Thank you so much for having us. Of this course. was great. That was fun.